I would say one of the biggest barrier to entries with Clipper firmware is the initial installation and setup process. Yes, there are things like Mainsail OS and Kaya that do help to simplify the process, but I still see a ton of confusion with regards to setup. A couple of months ago, Creality reached out to me asking if I was interested in testing out the Sonic Pad, a small little tablet looking device that is running Clipper as well as Clipper Screen. At the time, they didn't provide me with a ton of info out there and it looked very similar to the tablet that came with my FL Sun V400, so I asked for additional info. When they got back to me, one of the biggest standouts was the Sonic Pad's ability to generate a bin file for flashing the controller, as well as a config file from the tablet itself for certain Creality printers. This is something I felt that could help to bridge the gap for a lot of the potential Clipper users out there that want to check it out, but just don't feel comfortable with the current methods of installation. So I agreed to take a look at the Sonic Pad, and in today's video, we are going to run through the device's specs. We will go through the process of getting the Ender 3 S1 flashed with Clipper using just this tablet, and we will cover some of the things that I discovered while I was poking around and playing around with this device. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Thank you to Voxel PLA for sponsoring today's video. Voxel PLA is aiming to make 3D printing more accessible with a reliable and affordable filament. This filament has been used exclusively in a 150 machine print farm and is now available for purchase. They currently offer their PLA Plus in black, white, gray, red, and blue with additional colors coming next year. My personal favorites are Firetruck Red and Cool White. Voxel PLA is priced at $16.99 per kilogram and at two spools, shipping is free within the US. Bulk discounts for 10 or more spools are also offered and there is a dedicated form available for this. Links will be in the description to voxelpla.com so that you can find out more or pick up your own. Jumping into the specs, the Creality Sonic Pad is essentially a 64-bit, 7-inch tablet with a 1024 by 600 resolution screen running Linux with Clipper and a skinned version of Clipper screen on top of it. The CPU is labeled as the Creality T800 and it has 2 gigs of RAM with 8 gigabytes of internal storage. For connectivity, it can be used with Wi-Fi or a direct Ethernet connection. On the back of the device, there is a power input jack, two USB ports, LAN, and a sensor connector. One of the USB ports on the back is to connect the Sonic Pad to your printer, and the other one is to optionally allow you to add a USB webcam. The sensor connector is for the included accelerometer and will be used to run input shaper on your printer. The right side of the Sonic Pad has a power button along with power LED and status LED, and the left side has two additional USB ports for a total of four. There are two kickstand style feet on the back that will help to hold the tablet up and a couple of additional mounting holes on the back if you want to come up with your own sort of mounting solution. In the box, you get the Sonic Pad, a power adapter with swappable plugs that includes four options for different regions, the accelerometer and attaching cable, a USB cable with adapters for different printer controllers, as well as a flash drive and printed setup guide. Now that we've run through the specs, let's use the Sonic Pad to flash Clipper over to this Ender 3 S1. My S1 is currently running professional firmware, which is a community-based Marlin upgrade for the Ender 3 S1 that we covered in a past video, but the installation process would be the exact same whether you had stock firmware on the Ender 3 S1 or some other Marlin community firmware. Once you unbox the Sonic Pad, plug the power cable into the back of the unit along with the USB cable to the port labeled USB. Then push in the power button on the right side of the pad. The power button has a physical click to it. I thought initially that if I just tapped it, it would turn on, but no, you need to push it in until it clicks and then that will power on your device. Once powered on, you will be guided step-by-step step through the setup process. This involves setting your language, agreeing to a privacy policy, setting your region, connecting to Wi-Fi if you're going to be using wireless connectivity, and naming the device. After that, you will be taken to the printer selection page, which is something that is really unique about this device. At recording, they have two variants of the Ender 3 S1 for the different controllers, the S1 Pro, and three Ender 3 V2 options. I anticipate that through an update, Creality is going to be adding their other printers, at least the 32-bit ones that you can flash with just a uh, micro SD or SD card to this through an update. I have a feeling that they wanted to start out with kind of the more popular, which I would say is the Ender 3 line. For 8-bit controllers, which definitely seem to be something that's being phased out, or uh, controllers that just don't have bootloaders, I don't see this being able to flash the firmware. The Sonic Pad can also be used with non-Creality printers. There's a bit of information in the guide about that, but being that the most attractive element I think of this is probably its ease of getting at least Creality devices set up with just a couple of clicks. I didn't test that out. I'm not sure that I will. 
Ideally, what would be awesome is if Creality allowed for some sort of community library where people can give feedback and share their profiles and they can sort of just be synced with these devices. However, I could also see that being very bad because if someone either does something malicious or something incorrect in one of the configuration files and then it gets passed around, that could be very bad and unsafe. I selected the Ender 3 S1 profile for the controller that I had. You can figure out which version of the MCU you have by reading it off of your printer's control board, or someone told me also that you can check it based off of the firmware version that ships on your printer. I haven't checked that method, but if you don't want to open up your printer, that might be another route that you can take. Next, the pad will have you take your printer's memory card, put it into a USB adapter, and plug it into the device. The adapter is not included, so you'll need to make sure you have either a micro SD or full-size SD card, depending on your printer to USB adapter on hand. Then press the flash firmware button on screen to have the needed bin file transferred to your memory card. Removing the card from the sonic pad, make sure your printer is off and plug in the SD card into your printer. If you have already plugged your sonic pad via USB into your controller, I recommend unplugging it before you turn on your printer. For whatever reasoning, when I had this plugged in right away, it prevented the printer from flashing. So unplug the micro USB or USB cable if you have it already plugged in and then turn on your 3D printer. It will only take a couple of seconds for the board to flash itself. You can also very easily tell if you have something like the Ender 3 S1, like me, or the V2, their screens have their own firmware, which is not compatible with Clipper. So in my case, if you see it just frozen at the Creality splash screen, you'll know that Clipper has been flashed to your board. Now you will need to plug the USB cable from the Sonic pad into your printer. And if all goes well, when you tap next on the screen, you will get a firmware flash successfully notice. After clicking restart, you will get a few red error lines about Clippy that will go away after a couple of seconds. This will then lead you into the self-test, which will have you verify things like your fans working, limit switches, and motors. The last thing it will have you do is if you have auto bed leveling, set your Z offset and run a mesh. At this point, Clipper is installed on your printer with Clipper screen and you can print. I do, however, recommend that you at least run a quick PID tune for the hot end and the bed, although this is still a stock setup for whatever reasoning, it seemed like it needed a slight PID tune after flashing. You can find the PID tune under advanced settings. Also, you can enable macros and the terminal, which will be off by default. Under wireless, you can see the Sonic Pad's IP address, and if you type that into your browser, it will take you to the web interface. I've always used mainsail, but this comes pre-flashed with Fluid, so so far I've been using Fluid with the Sonic Pad. I did plug in a Logitech webcam that I had laying around to the USB port on the back labeled cam, and I was able to get it to display on the Sonic Pad. If you do use a webcam, you'll want to select Auto Connect under the device settings, and once you reboot it, it will also be visible in your Fluid dashboard. There are some additional settings for time lapses, which I have not played around with, but if that's something you're interested in, they are there. On the flash drive included with the Sonic Pad, there's also a couple of STL files. These are for mounting the included accelerometer for the tool head of the S1 S1 Pro or Ender 3 V2. I did print out the S1 version, mount it to the tool head, and run Input Shaper from the pad. Currently, it will run Input Shaper for the X axis and then Y axis one after another. This is a problem because there's only one accelerometer and there is no time or ability for you to run it on the X and then swap it to the Y or your bed, so you're always going to have completely incorrect Y axis input shaper values. I did let them know this and I'm hoping this is something they could fix fairly quickly through an update. I was able to run it specifically for the X and Y using the Clipper commands through the console, but since they don't provide you with any information on how to SSH or FTP into this, I wasn't able to actually access my graphs or do anything with them. For the time being, you can run Input Shaper just using the Input Shaper printable file, but in my opinion, this is absolutely something that needs to be included and updated as soon as possible. Having been using Clipper quite heavily for the past year, this definitely does give you the Clipper experience, but the installation process is very simple. They definitely need to fix Input Shaper on this pad and give you time to swap the accelerometer, but aside from that, this unit so far seems really solid. I can see them thinking that the whole goal of this is to simplify the process of the install, but I do think they should still provide the SSH or FTP information for seasoned users that want to go in and maybe update things, install Kaya, or in my case, Flash, Flash Mainsail instead of Fluid. That is something that I've already let them know as well, and I'm really, really hoping that they do decide to provide that info because again, I think that anyone that's already coming from Clipper that might be interested in this, they are definitely going to want that. Also with the additional couple USB ports on the side, I did ask Creality if it's possible to use this on multiple printers at the same time. And I was told that is something that they are working on. Now, of course, 
take that with a grain of salt. I hope that that is something that they implement, but all I can do is base this off of what I've got in front of me right now. And right now it is a single unit device. And right at $160 right now, it is definitely on the pricier side for an upgrade. However, seven inch pie touchscreens go anywhere from 60 to $80 roughly on Amazon. And even if you go with something that's inexpensive compared to Raspberry Pi, like the Big Tree Tech CB1, you're still gonna be spending like $100 to $120 to make something that's comparable in this package. Coupled with this being about as plug and play as I've seen Clipper so far, I do think there's going to be quite a lot of demand for this device. And that has been the Creality Sonic Pad. Let me know what your thoughts are in the description down below. If you are interested, I will have links down below in the description over to the product page or any other relevant information I can find on this so you can take a look for yourself. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys!